It's story time again, and this time it's the story of Aisha and Luigi. It's actually a real story, but the names have been changed to protect the people concerned. Luigi wasn't well. He was struggling to walk and work, and he was in pain. Many years ago in Italy, when he was much younger, he had had a hernia operation, so he recognised the signs and the feelings. Yes, it was a hernia, but on the other side of his body this time. His partner had made an appointment for him at the local clinic, and the doctor had said he'd never seen such a big hernia, and had referred him to the hospital straight away. Here he was now, sitting in the waiting room. He was nervous. He was always nervous with medical appointments, but his partner was with him, and English was her native language, so he knew he would be reassured. A young lady arrived and sat on the seat next to him. The young lady heard the man and other lady talking in the seats next to her in the hospital waiting room. She smiled. It was nice to hear Italian spoken. She liked the sound of the language and she had enjoyed learning it. The man was Italian, but the lady spoke Italian with an accent, an English accent. The man noticed her smile and asked if she spoke Italian. Yes, she replied, my name's Aisha. The man introduced himself as Luigi and also introduced her to his partner. They chatted a while. Aisha explained that she was originally from Iran, but had come to Italy with her family where she had gone to college and learned Italian. She was now in the UK and worked part-time as a language interpreter. She explained that she'd come to the NHS via an agency and received £30 an hour for her services. Even if she worked for only 15 minutes, she was paid a full hour and had her travelling expenses paid for too by the agency she worked for. The agency charged the NHS £80 an hour for their services and Aisha had been asked to come to the hospital today for Italian translation. Luigi's name was called for his appointment, and the nurse motioned to Aisha to come too. Aisha was to act as an interpreter for Luigi during his appointment. Luigi motioned to his partner to come along as well, but the nurse said no. Only Luigi himself and Aisha, the interpreter, would be able to attend the appointment. Luigi was nervous, but concentrated hard on what was being said. Luigi saw that Aisha was uncomfortable, and he started to feel more uncomfortable. Aisha was embarrassed at having to ask Luigi these questions that the doctor was asking. Did he have trouble passing water? Did he go regularly? Did he have pain when he got an erection? Luigi felt sorry for the poor girl having to ask him questions like that, and he wished his partner were with him instead of sitting outside waiting for him. He would have felt more comfortable being asked these questions by his partner. Finally, the appointment was over and he had a date for his operation. He thanked the doctor and Aisha and went to find his partner in the waiting room. If we look at the story, medically it was a success. But it made both Aisha and Luigi feel awkward and embarrassed by the nature of the questions. Whilst doctors are used to asking such questions, Aisha and Luigi are not accustomed to having discussions of this nature with strangers of the opposite sex. The NHS doesn't allow families or partners and friends to translate. It's thought that maybe they might not tell the truth to the patient out of kindness to spare their feelings. However, honesty is first and foremost in any relationship. If there's no honesty, then there's no trust. There is no blame on anyone here, but it does seem that perhaps the translation services could be arranged better. In recruitment, it's understood that there is always a markup from what is paid to the worker and charged to the client. In this case, £50 per hour seems very excessive. With over 7,000 languages recognised in the world, imagine how many of those different languages are spoken in the UK and how many appointments are made with the NHS for people who have trouble understanding English. Every time a translator is needed for any language other than English, it's costing the NHS and therefore the British taxpayer £80 per hour. That's a frightening amount of money. 
With the NHS being under pressure to keep up with health demands of the UK population, surely a better way can be found so this exorbitant amount can be saved and spent on other things within the NHS. Perhaps much needed hospital equipment or pay rises for low paid workers or even employing more staff such as bringing back matrons who always did an amazing job of supervising and ensuring the wards were clean and organised. There is the possibility of using a less expensive translating agency. If an agency advertises that they help the NHS and charge them less for their services in order to help them, then that would attract other businesses to their services. It works in other businesses too. If a restaurant has 10 tables every night for a month, and then it drops to five tables, prices need to be lowered to attract more customers through the door, not doubled to make up the difference. Lowering prices is good business practice. The more people have, the more they will spend. There are some great translating apps available too, and some of them are free. Ensuring doctors have access to these apps would be a very small outlay, and that outlay could pay for itself in a very short amount of time. I'm no expert and have no degree or qualifications to speak of, but it seems it's just common sense. If the general public can see it, then surely those in charge can see it too. We can find solutions to problems if we all put our heads together. There's always a win-win situation.